But you're not going to hear any of the audio here because we've heard some swearing at the scene. But as you can see, just seconds ago, uh, Buffalo police started to surround those who are sitting in the roadway at the corner of Chippewa and Delaware. They are protesting planned raids with Immigration and Customs Enforcement. And also they're protesting those detention camps that we've heard about uh, along the southwest border with some horrible conditions for immigrants who are seeking asylum in this country. We heard just moments ago uh, they were seeing some songs. They are saying this is a peaceful protest, but as you can see, they are refusing to leave the intersection of Delaware and Chippewa. And so as we look at these live pictures right now, you can see Buffalo police are physically arresting those who are gathered in the middle of the intersection. This started early afternoon today. We thought this protest was going to wrap up at about 1.30, and for a long time, Buffalo police were kind of letting this go on. There was a strong police presence downtown, but they weren't physically making anyone leave. Obviously, this hit a point where Buffalo police felt like they could no longer allow these folks to uh, illegally gather in the intersection there, and so they are now arresting these folks. It was just about 10, 15 minutes ago that Buffalo police got over their intercoms and warned everyone there, we're giving you a few minutes, you need to disperse, or we're going to arrest you because you're in violation of the law. And obviously, as you can see, those folks are still sitting there. Some of them resisting arrest right now as well. They would say, obviously, that this is civil disobedience, that this was a peaceful protest, and that police are coming in uh, and now using force for the arrests. But Buffalo police certainly gave them a warning uh, that this is exactly what they were going to do. Uh, our Dave McKinley is on the scene there. He's been following this as well. Dave was telling us a short time ago uh, about Buffalo police kind of warning these folks that this was what was in the cards. And a lot of the people there saying that they're trying to make a point. They're trying to draw attention to what they believe are human rights violations committed by our government. And so that's why these folks are still there as we look at uh, this man being arrested right now. The crowd was larger earlier in the afternoon, but now that this has gone on more than two hours, some people in the crowd had left. But it was really these folks who are right there in the middle of the intersection who are drawing the most attention from Buffalo police. They've had to shut down about six blocks of Delaware. It's been like that for uh, more than two hours now. This obviously having an impact on pedestrians, also car traffic throughout downtown Buffalo. You can see on the left side of your screen there, that is a shot from our downtown tower cam, kind of giving you a sense of the crowd. Again, earlier the crowd was a little larger. In addition to the folks who were sitting on the ground in the middle of the intersection, you also had a lot of protesters who were kind of walking circles around the intersection there. Some people, maybe an hour ago, we saw uh, a significant number of people leaving that protest, but it was these folks who are sitting on the ground there uh, who are refusing to leave. And again, you're not hearing the audio here just because uh, we were hearing some swearing earlier, but you can see some of these protesters not happy that they are being physically dragged out of that intersection. Uh, this is a story, obviously, that continues to develop. There is a huge police presence there. You can see they're carrying their batons. Uh, they had set up in kind of a, an aggressive posture uh, probably 10 or 15 minutes ago as they warned these protesters that they were going to start making some arrests. Uh, and then they kind of marched forward. This is while we were in Dr. Phil programming. Uh, police kind of marched and they circled around the protesters before then going right now one by one to make these arrests. Now, we've seen situations like this happen around the country. We haven't seen a lot of this uh, in Buffalo, but especially some of the protests that have followed police involved shootings. We've watched the pictures there and there is a systematic approach that police take when they are arresting these protesters. They surround the group as you can see as we look back here, to make sure that no one uh, starts to charge at them or no one who is also in the vicinity there uh, interrupts as they effectuate these arrests. Um, and then it is another group of officers that kind of go one by one and make these arrests. And so Buffalo police now have probably arrested about a half dozen people. It looks like maybe uh, a couple more remain there. But their goal, as they announced to the crowd, was that they were going to go in, they were going to make these arrests, that they've allowed this protest to go on long enough, and that they plan to reopen the roadway and reopen the intersection uh, a little bit more of a crowd seems to have gathered there now that police are making the arrests. Um, and now you can see an officer kind of talking to one of the protesters there. Uh, if you talk to police officers, they train for situations like this. But really, the last thing they want to do is come in and have to physically arrest people. Sometimes tensions can get very high in situations like this. 
Um, this, as you can see, an older lady being now taken away from the middle of the intersection there. They have handcuffed her, and we saw that they were uh, bringing up what they call a paddy wagon. Um, they drove that up about 20 minutes ago. It's nearby. That's what they will put them in. They'll presumably be taken to Buffalo Police Central Booking, where they will be charged uh, with a crime here as they've been arrested in the intersection. I believe this is the last protester or perhaps one more, this one not being taken away with, without a struggle. Uh, it was probably between a half dozen and a dozen protesters who were in the middle of the intersection uh, who are of most concern to police right now because the other folks were mostly on the sidewalks, a lot of them probably watching the commotion uh, that was going on, but it was these folks who were right in the middle of the intersection who were keeping traffic from going by there, and that is why Buffalo police have decided to now come in and arrest them. And I believe this is the last person that they are now taking into police custody. Right before officers went out and started making these arrests, uh, we heard the chants and the songs of the protesters get a little bit louder. Again, they're pointing out that they are peaceful protesters. They said, we will not go. But obviously, as we can see now, as this last protester is taken away, they were unsuccessful in that effort because they have now been arrested as these protests continue uh, in downtown Buffalo. Just to bring you up to date, if you're just now joining us, this protest started a little after noon today. There was a larger crowd there at the corner of Chippewa and Delaware early in the afternoon. Uh, there were some folks who would be sitting in the middle of the intersection. There were others who were circling around the intersection. They're trying to draw attention to U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, which has an office there at that intersection. There are some raids that are planned for this weekend around the country. These protesters aren't happy about that. They're also upset about the conditions at some immigrant detention centers in the southwest part of the United States. We've heard reports over the past few days of uh, some children saying they were retaliated against when they complained about the conditions. Uh, one child actually saying that she was abused by an agent or an officer at one of those detention centers. And so the goal of these protesters was to draw attention to that. It appears now, as we look at these live pictures, and I'm going to bring in my colleague Steve Brown, it looks, Steve, like all of the protesters from the middle of that intersection have been arrested. Yeah, and here's the thing that the police... Um, have to keep in mind the entire time that they're doing these things is they have to act by their protocols, their training, but they also have to be mindful of, and you can see this as you're, as you're looking on camera, that every movement that they make in this situation is going to be documented, not mm -hmm. necessarily by somebody who might be friendly to them, who might be critical of how it is that they're operating. So they have to really mind their P's and Q's, make sure that they're doing things according to their training, according to what it is police procedure is in these particular situations. No one wants to see anyone get hurt. Uh, protesting in America is almost uh, your birthright. I mean, you can go out and, and have, have your say. It's, it's part of the, the wonderful thing about this country. But when protests start interfering with what is called governmental in administration, which is likely what these folks might get charged with, mm -hmm. then police have to step in and say, hi, yeah, you have a right to demonstrate, but you don't have the right to demonstrate and hold up traffic. There was clearly a point at which Buffalo police decided this has gone on long enough. Yeah, I mean, they've been out there for a while. I was out there and took a look at it because this is, as Michael's probably already identified, this is just a half a block from where uh, the front door of our station is. So I went down and took a look at this, and they've been out there for a while. And police, I think, would have exercised a great deal of patience here in allowing them to do what it is that they set out to do, which is make a statement about the political position that they wanted to talk about and draw attention to it. They've successfully done it because, hey, look, we're on live TV talking about it right here and now. Mm -hmm. But um, at a certain point, police have to make a measurement as to how they're going to go forward with this because we're now starting to head towards later afternoon. There are going to be some large offices and businesses that are going to start exiting the city. This is a major thoroughfare both in and out of the city. So you're going to need to start thinking about whether or not they're going to take action. And I saw on Twitter a bunch of uh, folks, a number of folks, who uh, from different news organizations here in town talking about how the size of the protests seemingly got smaller. Mm -hmm. I can tell you from having talked with people who've been involved in these kind of protests before that certain numbers of them have already self-identified as saying, I'm getting arrested today. And some will not. So there will be a large, larger group that will be there in order to kind of draw attention, you know, chant, make some noise, hold some signs, 
get some media coverage, but there will be a core group of those that will stick behind to make sure that only, you know, some of those folks end up getting arrested. Yep. Um, and in some certain circumstances, uh, this is all drawn, all planned out well in advance of demonstrations actually being executed. Yeah, so you can see here, we have Channel 2's Dave McKinley, who's at the scene. Dave, I hope you can hear me right now. Uh, we've had the audio down um, since we came back on the air this most recent time due to some swearing. Tell us what you've seen and what you've more specifically heard there at the scene over the past few minutes. Well, Michael, I could tell you as far as swearing, there wasn't a lot of it. There was a little bit of jeering from some members of the crowd directed toward these officers who were directed to come in and, as you saw live, uh, remove the demonstrators who had assembled in the middle of the street. Uh, they were heckling them, saying things like, uh, quit your job, you should be ashamed, and we'll be back, was the uh, last chant they let out. But uh, at this point, it, I've got to say, it went off rather peacefully. We didn't see any incidents you saw live on air, and you described, Michael, a one man who, who uh, you, I heard you turn use the term resisting. Uh, he did put up a little bit more of a struggle against the police when they came to move him in than the others did. He was not exactly compliant. But this demonstration began at noon. We were told that it was going to wrap up at 1.30 and maybe that was what uh, uh, city officials were under the impression of as well. But as time went on, as an hour went on, at about 2.30 uh, a loudspeaker came on these officers were assembled and these demonstrators were warned they had five minutes to leave peaceably uh, or they could face uh, arrest and removal and even they used the technical term uh, the use of dispersing agents which we would assume to mean uh, tear gas and other methods such as that uh, that never came into play here because um, five minutes later at back at 2 36 p.m uh, the first of the officers moved in precision like surrounded the demonstrators and then uh, began to remove them one by one using uh, uh, the uh, plastic zip ties around their wrists and taking them to a waiting vehicle where they will uh, assumably be processed uh, after their arrest Michael all right, Dave McKinley reporting live at the scene there. And we're going to return you to programming in just a second. Uh, before we do, Steve, let me ask you, because you were down there, because I think this is important. There, there was reporting earlier today that protesters plan to be back out during this evening. Perhaps when some people got off work, they would be able to have a larger crowd. Um, perhaps they wanted to disrupt um, the evening c commute. Um, we had heard that that may be happening five or six o'clock. Did you hear about that? Is that the plan as far as when you were at the scene earlier? I did not, but I will tell you this, that if they're planning on disrupting, that's the window which you want to do that between four and six o'clock. That's when, you know, we don't have a great deal of traffic compared mm -hmm. to other major metropolitan areas around, but that is the area. Those are the main thoroughfares that head you out towards the 33, or head you towards 33, head you towards the 190, head you towards the Skyway. Yep. So those are the ways in which you could if you were out to disrupt, that would be a way to disrupt. And we heard them chanting, we'll be back. And so presumably some people do plan uh, to continue the protests. Uh, we are just now hearing that at least parts of Delaware are reopening, although you can see Buffalo police. Uh, this is Chippewa. Um, so Chippewa right now appears to still be closed, at least at the intersection of Delaware. But we are now seeing car traffic being reopened to Delaware, which was certainly the goal of Buffalo police here. Uh, after more than two and a half hours of Delaware Avenue being closed, uh, police went in. They arrested, we believe, between a half dozen and a dozen people, some of them putting up a little bit of a fight, others uh, succumbing to the arrest pretty peacefully. Um,